And now, ladies and gentlemen, if we could have everyone's attention over to the center of the dance floor, I'd like to call forward the father of the bride, Mr. Alan Scott, for a welcome. Thank you. I had to recover from my dance first, but I think I've got my heart rate down enough that I can come up here and speak. Now, when I was a principal of a school, you know, those of you that were still talking when I'm up here, you'd have to come see me after I got finished. Oh, look at that. I have perfect, perfect. Uh, a good evening and a very warm welcome. I'm Alan Scott, father of the most beautiful bride and proud husband to her gorgeous mother, Leslie. Knowing Whitney's propensity for world travel, somebody asked me if Whitney was having a destination wedding. And I replied, if you're from Pensacola, the answer is yes. Sarasota is a destination. But for many of you, this is a local event. So no matter how far you travel to be here, I know we have folks from California, Arkansas, New York, DC, Michigan, Massachusetts, all over the country. Thank you for making the effort to celebrate with us. Whitney and Brandon are truly honored to have you in attendance. Now, before we get to dinner this evening, I must thank Michael and Tammy. Raise your hands right back there for this evening for hosting the dinner cruise last night. If you went on the dinner cruise, that was awesome. Thank you. I tell you what, that was a great time. That was a fun event. So I do appreciate the task for that. Also, we must thank, thank Michael and Brandon for the Team Taff hats. I think most everyone got one. The little alligators on them, you like that? Yeah, those are very cool hats. Every time I put it on, it will remind me of this evening. Uh, when was the last time any of you attended a wedding that had a real alligator head and real live alligators at a wedding, huh? That, that wasn't in a Louisiana swamp when you had to go to the wedding. So, so I'll tell you, that's the first. I must thank Whitney and Brandon for planning this celebration. If you received an invitation to this event, you are truly special to Whitney and Brandon, and we are thankful for you are here. Um, this next part, and I'll tell you, I, I wrote this a while back. Uh, some of you that know me know that I've been struggling with some health issues. I am very blessed of God just to be able to stand in front of you right now and deliver the Father of the Bride speech. Uh, you know, it, it's something that I have thought about and prayed about for a very long time. Whitney, you're beautiful. And I hope I can make this without tearing up. But you are beautiful. On January 26, 1987, I was a happy man. The doctor handed me a beautiful baby girl, and I could not imagine how lovely you look today. I was so excited to have a daughter. You were, and I tell everybody, you reminded me of a skint squirrel. You were one solid muscle. You were born with beautiful olive-colored skin like you came from God with a suntan. And, and I knew you were going to be special. On that day, I envisioned four events, four events that I looked celebrating with my beautiful daughter. One would be the day that you accepted Jesus as your Savior, and we have celebrated your salvation. I remember we decided last year during our annual father-daughter hunt, after a lengthy discussion about angels, where Whitney and I would meet up in heaven one day. I'll tell you, that is a great conversation to have with your daughter. Two would be the day I helped her kill her first deer. Uh, what she did at age nine at the Little L stand in Pineapple, Alabama, it was the first deer she ever shot at. She made a perfect shot. She dropped it in its tracks. I was so proud. It was just amazing. For those of you that hunt could understand the father and the daughter. I, our father-daughter hunting trips were big. Three would be your college graduation. I'll never forget, she started off as a molecular microbiology major. That's not where she finished. <laughs> she finished in the prestigious business professional selling program with multiple job offers. And at the time, she was the first person ever hired by Intuitive Surgical right out of college. Again, I was so proud. Now, at number four, now, now, the fourth big event I looked forward to was the day she was going to get married. I'll have to tell you, the first three events went off without a hitch. As time went on, I wasn't sure when we were going to get to number four. <laughs> but guess what? Then she met Brandon. Tall, dark, handsome, intelligent, athletic, well-read, with the most impressive aspect of Brandon 
was finally there was a young man capable of keeping up with Whitney. Brandon is well educated. He likes to surf, run, snow ski, skateboard, hunt, spearfish, travel abroad. Finally, I thought Whitney had met her match. She had met her equal in Brandon. And guess what? Once we treat, teach Brandon a few archery skills, I think he'll be able to go toe to toe with Whitney in every aspect of her life. They are perfect life partners. And for those of you that don't know Whitney, she's a pretty amazing and accomplished outdoor person, athlete, adventurous spirit, world traveler driven, and yes, at times, even a little spirited. If I must be honest, I raised her to believe she could do anything, if not better, any guy could do. I have taught her how to kill, clean, catch pretty much anything that crawls, flies, swims, or lives in the water of the woods, and she is my number one hunting buddy. And some of our best memories growing up was our annual father-daughter hunting trip. But don't let her dressing up in camo fool you. Her mother taught her how to be a true Southern woman, and as a parent today, she can be beautiful and glamorous as well. In February, when Brandon asked for my permission to marry Whitney, I told him at that time that I had been praying specifically for him since January 26, 1987, even though I had no clue who he was. I've been praying for him his entire life, praying that God would send her a man that would love, honor, and cherish her and take care of her as well as not better than I could as her father. I told Brandon God had answered my prayers through him. Brandon, I appreciate you taking the time to ask for my blessing and to show me that family is vastly important to you. Not sure if everyone knows, Brandon proposed to Whitney on a sandbar in Siesta Key with Leslie and I one boat watching and his parents, Tammy and Michael, and another, watching, another boat watching. There was even a drone flying overhead to film the entire event. I guarantee you that day will never be forgotten by my family or by his family. You proved family is important. And for a father, that was a huge, that was a great blessing. And Tammy and Michael, I must also confess, I thought Brandon and Whitney would be a great match to provide us with beautiful, smart grandchildren. I'm looking forward to that day. I must also, I must also commend you on raising a wonderful young man and modeling a successful marriage as his parents because that is a great message to send to our kids to model a successful marriage. Hopefully and prayerfully, Whitney is an answer to your family prayers as Brandon was an answer to my family prayers. Now, Brandon, when Whitney was a little girl, my roommate from college, Jim Cooper, he's a big guy, you can't miss him, right there. He was in computer sales at the time. He told me Whitney was going to be a force to be reckoned with because she was cute, intelligent, had a million dollar personality, did not take no for an answer. And even as a little girl, she's always been driven and knows what she wanted and how to get it. Whether it was talking to some young boys into buying her ice cream at the Little League Park or walking around the restaurant trying to talk people out of their coasters while they were eating dinner. She's always been motivated and driven. I believe the two of you together will be a force to be reckoned with and have unlimited potential as a couple. Brandon, I'm gonna leave you with one Whitney story. My good buddy, Cal Clevenger, that owns a property Whitney was raised hunting on. Cal will remember this story. When Whitney was in the ninth grade, okay, ninth grade. When she was in the ninth grade, she was very successful in all aspects of her young life. She was the freshman class president at J.M. Tate High School. She was an honor student, a cheerleader, a sprinter on the track team, and played soccer, and everybody knew Whitney was my number one hunting buddy. One deer hunting trip that year, she asked me, could she hunt by herself rather than sitting with me? For all this time, she always sat beside me up until her ninth grade year. We always hunted together. She promised to be careful. She reminded me of all her successes, and that I let her brother hunt by himself at her age. Well, you can't argue with that. So that, I agreed, and that afternoon, she killed an eight point. It's actually still hanging in her house. The next day, the same thing. She hunted by herself, she killed the doe, she loaded it up by herself, brought it out of the woods, telling me she didn't need any help, and assisted in cleaning the deer, which was rare back in those days. She then asked me if I was proud of her and if I believed she could handle herself in the woods. 
I told her I was proud of her and had no problems with her hunting skills or woodland abilities. I realized that the whole weekend was a setup with the next question. She said, since you know I can handle myself in the woods, there's this boy from school who wanted to know if I could go hunting with him next weekend. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. I'm starting to see how all this works. Now it all made sense. The whole weekend was a setup to ask me that question. I told her she could not go hunting with the boy from school next weekend <laughs> because even though I was sure about her, I was not sure what the boy from school would be hunting, and the answer was no. <laughs> I was not giving up my slot as Whitney's number one hunting buddy. That is until today. Brandon, I want you to come up here. Hold that up for everybody to see. Brandon, you're an answer to prayers. And I'm honored to relinquish the status of Whitney's number one hunting buddy to you. I love you. Be God blessed with a long, happy, and successful marriage. I love you too, man. Now for the blessing. Okay, I would like to bless the food. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for this joyous celebration. We thank you that we can come together, Lord, as a group, just to support Whitney and Brandon. We thank you for their marriage. Lord, we ask that your spirit would be upon each and every person in this room. Lord, we know that a marriage is just not two people. A marriage is truly a community of people coming around a couple, celebrating that couple, Lord, and just encouraging and praying for that couple and lifting that couple up, Lord, because we understand that especially in this day and time, that's the only way a couple is going to be successful if they have the encouragement and the support of a huge crowd of people. Lord, I thank you for this crowd. I thank you that this crowd loves Whitney and Brandon. I ask that this crowd, Lord, would be tasked each and every day to lift them up in prayer and to do one little thing every single day to help support this marriage. I ask that you would bless this food, that you would use it for the nourishment of our bodies. For it's in Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. Thank you.